So you know how AAA game studios are making remakes now of these super popular classic PS1 games from the 90s and early 2000s? Crash Team Racing had an awesome remake, Spyro had a killer remake, Tomb Raider had an insanely good remake. But you know which awesome, popular, yet super underrated PS1 game has not had a remake yet? Jackie Chan Stuntmaster. That's right, Jackie Chan Stuntmaster, a game produced by a studio called Radical Entertainment. This game was one of my my absolute favorites on the PS1 console when I was growing up. The gameplay of this game was incredible. It had such a complex fighting system with different combos and variations, which ensured you would not get tired of playing it even after several hours. And the overall aesthetic of this game was so funny and creative. I ended up playing this game from start to finish maybe three or even more times when I was growing up. So basically what I'm trying to say is, yo. Radical Entertainment. Why haven't we had a remake yet? But you know what they say, if nobody else is gonna do it, you have to do it yourself. And do it yourself I did indeed. So I fired up Unity and boom, three months later, it's done, it's finished. I did it, it's, it's completely done. And now I present to you for the first time ever, the remake of Jackie Chan Stuntmaster. And by the way, folks, if you want to try this game on your own, there's a WebGL version link in the description down below. Just click on it and start playing it in your favorite browser. But I know what you're all gonna ask me right now. But Andres, did you really create this game all by yourself? Um, no. Not really. You know in the game when you knock the first guy out and the door opens and then you enter the door? Well, yeah, basically that's it. That's basically all I did. I know, I know, you're all incredibly disappointed in me right now, I get that, but I have a perfectly good explanation for it. So, basically, it boils down to the fact that it was hard. It was hard, okay? I mean, it was so freakishly hard, you can't even imagine. I basically built this thing from literal zero. The models, the level design, the lighting, the animations, the code, the enemies, well, one enemy at least, the AI for the enemies, the gameplay, the code, so much code. And I did that all by myself from scratch. I didn't use any plugins or anything. But in the process, I learned so much cool stuff about Unity and game development in general. So in today's Today's devlog, I want to share with you my journey throughout this insane project, talk about all the cool things that I discovered along the way, so without further ado, let's dive into it. So let's start at the beginning, why did I actually build this thing? Well, you know how when you start your journey in game development, you have some kind of game in mind that you always dreamed of making. So for me, I've always wanted to make an action-packed, arcade-style beat-em-up game just like Jackie Chan Stuntmaster. But in order to get there, I would certainly need a lot of years of intense game development experience before I could even start dreaming about tackling such a massive project. But then it hit me this insane idea, why don't I just take this game that I admire so much and try to reverse engineer it and create with the tools I have today and see how far I get. And so that's how the idea of the whole remake was born. So with this crazy idea in mind, I started planning how to actually get this thing off the ground. I realized I would first need some kind of a way to rip the models, the textures and the level from the original game and import them into Unity and then do the rest in code. And turns out there's this amazing tool called 3D Screenshot, which is part of the PS1 simulator called Abba 
Avocado. This tool inside Avocado takes a 3D screenshot of the scene in the PS1 game and exports it in OBJ format. This feature looked so amazing, it was almost too good to be true. And in my case, it truly turned out too good to be true. Turns out this tool works just for some games and not others. Unfortunately, when I tried to use it inside Jackie Chan Stuntmaster, it gave me totally wrong coordinates, upside down axes and other weird stuff. After an insane amount of parameter tweaking, I realized... Uh, just, just, uh, it just can't be done with, with this tool. Luckily, all my hard efforts were not completely useless, as I somehow miraculously managed to extract the texture of Jackie's face. Look at that, look at how handsome he looks. I would say he's in his 30s, maybe? In fact, this little pixelated blob proved to be very useful later in the process, but more on that later. Okay, so one tool didn't work, big deal, there should be other tools that do the same thing, right? Well, three hours later and after an exhausting session of Google searching and sketchy software downloading, with trials and errors, I finally realized that no, no, there are, there are no other tools that work. But I found this amazing article by a person named Sucks in Space. Sucks in Space. Uh, sucks in Space. Suck, sucks in Space. Sucks in Space. Sucks in Space. This person actually went above and beyond to locate the specific data pointers in the raw hexadecimal output of PlayStation's memory RAM and followed the pointer trail to locate all the vertices of a given 3D model. The downside was, since this was all just random hex values, you couldn't actually know which model you were looking at. So it was a bit like wandering in the dark and seeing what you can randomly extract. But this sucks in space person used this technique quite successfully to extract several spatial models from a game called Colony Wars Vengeance. As a fellow programmer, I truly understood the language this person was speaking. Pointers? Yes, I know what pointers are. RAM? Yeah, of course. I know what a RAM is. Hexadecimal code? Hell yeah, I learned that in the university a while ago. I don't remember much, but uh, I'm sure I can refresh my memory. So with that determination, I brewed some coffee, sat down at my laptop, started reading the article through, tried to soak up as much knowledge as I could, and soon I realized, oh, no way in hell am I doing this. This is too complicated. This is actual rocket science. Okay, 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 it's not that bad. I, I mean, I could potentially do it. But would I want to spend two weeks trying to replicate what this person did in hopes that I would then be able to extract random models out of it? No, no, it's not really worth it. So with that, I was back to square one. I was so exhausted by this point, so I just decided, the hell with it, I'm just gonna do everything from scratch myself. But to lay out all my development process in specific detail, I would need to produce an hour-long video. So instead, I'm just gonna try to go over all the details in a little bit of a faster pace. So let's go. First, I had to build a model of Jackie, our main hero, our most valuable asset. In order to get this done, I knew I would need a lot of reference images and videos of him. And this is where the avocado simulator came in handy. No kidding, guys, this simulator is so cool. Not only does it allow you to play old PS1 games, but it also comes bundled with a lot of tools that let you inspect the game in a way you couldn't do on the original console. With avocado's virtual camera feature, I was able to point the game camera in a different angle and this allowed me to get more precise front and side views of Jackie. So with some ridiculously bad reference images I was able to put together a somewhat somewhat similar Jackie model. Oh and remember that face that I managed to extract from the 3D screenshot tool? This meant that I could now put Jackie's beautiful face on top of the model as well as some other low poly textures of his clothes. Next I used some recorded videos from the avocado simulator to try to recreate the animations for the model. Let's 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 just pause for a second. Do you know how many animations I actually had to create? I mean, when you play the game, you don't even realize that there could be so many. I mean, he's just running around doing some kicks and punches and stuff, right? Wrong. There are tons of them, small details I would never had noticed. I mean, he has different jump animations from when he's walking or running. He can ricochet from walls, climb on ledges, push objects, and he has so many fighting combos. Oh my god. I mean, there were so many fighting combos that every time when I tried to play the game to reverse engineer it, I kept finding new ones. It all got to a point where I thought, <sighs> Okay, if I want to finish this project until I die, 
or at least uh, until the end of the year, then I have to make some sacrifices. So I did not include all the fighting combos. I apologize. But even without the combos, I made a total of 15 custom animations, which took me about two weeks to complete. So the overall process of making Jackie alone was like three weeks or something. Okay, moving on. Next, I tried my best to create the level itself. This was actually pretty fun. I never imagined I would have so much fun creating architectural environments. But I really enjoyed the process of taking somewhat old looking, low poly graphic game environments and transforming them into something more detailed and modern looking. I made a very detailed version of the Chinese temple. That took up a lot of hours. I also made sure to recreate the alleyway as close to the original as possible. I don't speak or read Chinese, so I just relied on Google Translate to whip up some generic Chinese street signs. And last but not least, I added a few trash cans here and there and a few posters to make the scene more lively. The real magic happened when I imported the level into Unity. I set up a custom light box, put up some nice street lights and whatnot, and in the end I managed to render a pretty cool looking baked light map. The level design process overall took me about three weeks. Next it was time to set up the controls for Jackie. I started out fairly simple with basic movements and jump controls, but as I dug deeper into all the specific actions Jackie can take, once I started replicating them my code slowly started piling up. By the end of the whole project the entire file for my Jackie controller alone was more than a thousand lines of code. And just look at Jackie's animation controller, it's just so beautiful. So with that done, I now had a happy Jackie Chan jumping around in his little Jackie Chan land, exploring places and having fun, but there was one crucial aspect of the game that was still missing, and those were the enemies. So since I had no control over the enemy's movements and behavior, I couldn't get good reference images of him. So I decided to just create my own version of this dude, and I ended up creating this handsome gentleman. The real challenge was when it came to texturing this guy's face. Now I am no texture painting artist, okay, let's be honest with ourselves. I just can't seem to paint a decent looking low poly model face. So I knew I needed some external tools to help me with this. Now for Jackie, I I got really lucky. Remember that ridiculously handsome face that I somehow managed to extract from the original game? Well, if it wasn't for that, I would have ended up with a very bad, horrible, terrifying, creepy, haunted thing. For the enemy dude, however, I had somewhat creative freedom. So this was actually the first time I relied on AI tools to help me out on this one. I found this interesting website where you can create different human faces by tweaking the style and characteristics of your liking. After some adjustments and experimentation, I managed to produce a nice looking AI generated face that suited my enemy character very well. So for Jackie Chan, I really wanted to do justice to his character by trying to recreate his exact movements in the animations because that's exactly what the real Jackie Chan did back in the day in his mocap suit for this game. For the enemy, however, uh, who cares about his movements? So I ended up just using some standard Mixamo animations just to save time. One cool custom detail I added though was the enemy's head movement which is following Jackie while the enemy stands in his idle pose before Jackie approaches him. The next step was to create a finite state machine for the enemy when the dude fights with Jackie. This was actually a pretty fun thing to do. This was the first time in my life I ever programmed a finite state machine. With the help of scriptable objects, I basically replicated the same behavior that was laid out in this old Unity tutorial of creating a simple tank game. Although the tutorial itself is pretty old, the principles taught there really gave a good insight on how to create nice AI state machines. I recommend you check it out if you're interested in that topic. Anyway, now with the enemy modeled, animated and AI enhanced, it was time to set up the fighting system itself. Now I don't have a lot of time to get into details about this because the video is already running very long but if you want a more detailed tutorial about fighting systems then let me know in the comments below and maybe next time I can whip something up. So when we talk about fighting systems to make it short and right to the point I realize there are basically two simple ways to set this up. Either you can have animated box colliders listening for collisions and acting accordingly upon impact or you can have rigid body colliders colliding with each other and letting physics run wild. I chose to go with the former approach because it 
it gave me a possibility to fine tune certain behaviors, like for example, what happens when you receive a hit, or how far the subject will be pushed upon impact of the hit. But surely there are even better ways of doing this, this is just an approach that was fast and efficient to implement in my case. So with the enemy created and with the fighting system set up, everything was starting to come into place. The whole enemy creation process, along with the fighting system set up, took me about four weeks to implement. So the remaining two weeks of this three month long project I spent on finding and fixing bugs, adding some bells and whistles here and there, hooking up fighting sounds and whatnot, adding passing cars and oscillating lights, and making the canopy. I'm sorry, what did you just say? Uh, making what now? The canopy. It's no big deal, it's just a solid object. It won't take more than an hour to create, right? Right? <sighs> okay, so here's the thing. I just wanted to find a way to cherry pick some vertices and animate those vertices separately in Unity. Is that too much to ask? For some reason, there is no way in Unity to create any object animations without a rig. Well, maybe there is, but that would involve some heavy custom scripting. Now, I did not know that this can't be done at the time. So what happened was, for like two days straight, I tried to find a way to import this simple bouncy movement into Unity as an animation. Once I realized I couldn't do that, guess what I did next? I created a skeleton rig with just one bone. For the whole canopy. Just one bone. So the canopy had its own skeletal rig. It was basically its own character at this point, with its own animation controller and everything. I mean, it works, and I'm happy it works, don't get me wrong, but it just seems so silly. So silly just to have a separate animator for a freaking canopy. Anyway, as I was making this, I was thinking all the time, surely there should be a better way to do this, right? Do you know of any? If you do, then please let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, now with all the tweaks tweaked, with the bugs debugged, with the rigs rigged, and with the canopy finally becoming a real-life character of its own, the remake of Jackie Chan Stuntmaster, or in this case, the mere 1% of it, was finally done. Once again, I apologize I couldn't do the whole game. This would have taken me a lot of years to finish, but still this little game demo was pretty fun to make. It took me back to my childhood, lots of nostalgic memories, lots of fun times. So I'm glad I did it anyway, even if it's just 1% of it. If you're still here, wow, thanks for watching. It's, uh, it's not an easy task to put three months of work into one single devlog video. If you feel that there is any topic or technical functionality that is displayed in this game demo that you would like to see a more in-depth tutorial for, please let me know in the comments down below and I will try my best to create a more in-depth video of this topic in one of the next devlog videos. And with that said, this concludes today's action-packed devlog video. Thank you all for watching this and I wish you all a fantastic rest of your day. Bye. Thank you again for watching this and I wish you all a fantastic rest.